Hello, you've caught me playing Fallout 4. A, because it is a good game and has just had a PS5 upgrade. And B, because I remembered recently that this was the last game I played before becoming a parent. I loaded up my save file and it was like unearthing a time capsule containing a version of me that no longer exists. My in-game inventory of bullets and bottle caps, a strangely apposite reflection of the kind of scattered life detritus I used to value, but that now, eight years after becoming a dad, feels laughably worthless. Bit early in the video for such a heavy paragraph, isn't it? I apologise. Being a parent is magical. In the sense that all your free time you used to fill with playing video games and or lying down has suddenly disappeared. Like magic. That you'll be time poor after having kids is so obvious it's barely an observation. However, there are other exciting challenges I've faced in my ongoing quest to balance being someone who plays video games with being someone who isn't a terrible father that I'd like to share with you now. Here then are seven dilemmas only gamers with kids will understand. And if you don't have kids, well, you can just sit back and enjoy this video from the comfort of your living room that's probably really tidy. Entry number one. You know, towards the end of the year, when all your music and entertainment apps present to you with a social media friendly package of everything you've enjoyed over the last 12 months so your friends can judge you. Yeah, for me, it may as well just be a big red button attached to all my profiles that loudly honks loser every time someone clicks on it. Look, Anastasia is in my top five artists of 2023, but I swear every time Left Outside Alone comes on, I can do an extra five push ups. But anyway, that's not the point. When the PlayStation wrap-up was introduced, I was pretty chuffed because finally, here was a thing I could post which would show everyone once and for all that actually, I'm secretly really cool and that I like and play interesting games you probably haven't even heard of because you're too mainstream. Oh, I see Rob Pearson's most played game this year is Solve the Clever Puzzles 5. What an interesting and intelligent person he must be. Is the kind of thing I imagined you all saying, a bloom of self-satisfaction warming me from inside. This was before my daughter started playing games on my PS5, however, turning an annual tradition of smug showing off into one of hiding shamefully in the darkest corner of the internet I could find. Because while everyone else still had really cool games at the top of their most played list, mine turned out to be Poor Patrol on a Roll. God. And therein comes the dilemma faced by all gaming parents. You, of course, want to introduce your children to this hobby that's very important to you, and getting to share that with them is an amazing experience. But when they start going rogue and impacting your PSN street cred... It's difficult. But, Rob, you can just create a separate profile for your daughter so she's not playing directly on your account. Yes, yes, I, I did that, obviously. So, the 170 hours of Paw Patrol on a roll... Look, I had to play the game and get good at it in case you needed help, okay? The second dilemma only gamers with kids will understand is one that basically acts as a metaphor for the overarching parent experience. As gamers, one thing we pride ourselves on is a good setup. And by that, I mean a little area of the house you've carved out for yourself that says, This is me. This is my space. And when I'm in this space, it's only games that matter. Some gaming setups are cosy and modest, a small shelf with some plushies or figurines perhaps. Others are elaborate and fanciful with LED light shows and miniature drinks fridges. The one thing all gaming setups have in common, however, is that they are yours. And heck, you're proud of it. Maybe you've saved up your hard-earned dollar to buy a snazzy 4K TV so your PS5 games look the best they possibly can. It's a carefully curated space made so you can enjoy the likes of God of War Ragnarok with booming audio and visuals so sharp they could take your eye out. Then you have kids and the space that's exclusively for you and for enjoying God of War Ragnarok 
is forcibly commandeered so they can play. Minecraft, 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 Minecraft. Look at Minecraft. me. This is the face of someone not just squeezed onto the edge of his own gaming setup, but also squeezed onto the edge of relevance in his own life. Daddy, would you like to see the new horse stable I've built? One particular strand of parental pain happens when you have to pretend your kids are better than they actually are at something. Which is usually fine, you know, you want to encourage their passions and not be a terrible human, yada yada. <gasps> oh wow, did you draw this? No, that is brilliant. I can't believe you've drawn this. You are going to be an illustrator when you grow up. But there's a particular type of pretending that, for us gamers, with competitive instincts programmed into us at a cellular level, is a real struggle. When you have to let your kids beat you in multiplayer games. I mean, this takes Herculean levels of restraint, particularly when we're playing Crash Team Racing and I'm having to make my thumbs unlearn those twitches of muscle memory necessary to beat Oxide's ghosts, all to feed the growing ego of this little swine. Oh, you beat me again. How are you so good at this? As four follows three, so does the next parent gamer dilemma on our list grow out of the previous one. The thing is, if you pretend something for long enough, eventually it just becomes truth. For instance, I've been in these videos pretending to be funny and interesting for ten years now, and... Yeah, keep pretending. Anyway, the point is, there will come a time when your kids grow up and you won't have to let them win anymore because they will kick your ass all by themselves. Oh, you beat me again. How are you so good at this? Congratulations, you're now at the emotions cocktail bar of parenthood, where you'll feel both alarm and sadness at your own waning gaming prowess, yet also pride and happiness at having achieved what is in many ways the ultimate goal of parenthood, to make a human being that's better than you. I think it's time I gave you this. The controller with which I beat Oxide's ghost on Cortex Castle on the original PS1. What do you mean you're not interested in playing anymore? This is a classic! Delson! All right, we're into entry number five already, I see. This is all going so fast, it feels like only yesterday it was entry number one. Anyway, being a dad, being a gamer, dilemmas, yes. When your kids aren't interested in those all-time favourites you've daydreamed of showing them. Oh, this stings, but it's the classic collision between the luxury cruise liner of romanticism you boarded before even becoming a parent and the iceberg of reality you smack in two years later. You know, in the before times, I'd planned out how and when I was going to introduce my future children to all the classics I loved growing up. First, they were going to play Spyro and Crash and, you know, absolutely love them and laugh gaily at the magical bonding experience between child and father that playing these games facilitated. Then, after they developed an appreciation for the history of the noble platformer and the genre's familial ties to PlayStation, they'd perhaps dabble in the platformers of the modern day. Astro's Playroom, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Oh, Papa, they'd say, you of learned wisdom and impeccable gaming taste, who is my inspiration and role model for all things, please now share with me the knowledge of what game to play next, the game that will make me realise, as it did you, the boundless depths of narrative nuance to which games can travel, and of the resulting joy that comes with being a gamer. And then I'd say, oh my sweet child, finally it is time for you to play. Final Fantasy VII. The most important thing in my, one of the most important things in my life and the game that made me realise what games could be, you know, it's got characters that you'll remember forever, a story that is as unput downable as your favourite book and I think the time has come.
for you to play it. What do you say? Can I play Minecraft on the big TV? In the end, my daughter did end up trying, no, not Final Fantasy VII, Spyro the Dragon, and I got to look on proudly as she glided about, roasting norks and slurping up gems. In fact, she enjoyed it so much, I could sit her in front of Spyro while I took care of other important bits and pieces on my to-do list, you know, like washing up and sitting down. And it's then that I'd run into gaming parent dilemma number six, when you're on call for what I've come to term baddie duty. You see, when she was younger, my daughter used to like playing the first level of Spyro over and over, because nothing attacks you. You just swoop about freeing dragons, breathing fire and looking cute. But then you get to Stone Hill and you face off against what to a three-year-old is, apparently, the scariest thing in the world. Sheep with angry faces. And when faced with sheep with angry faces, who are you going to call? That's right. You cool. Daddy! Daddy! Yes, you call your hero. That's who. Daddy, the destroyer of angry sheep. The undisputed king of baddie duty. Not sure this is a dilemma, actually. I kind of miss baddie duty. The final dilemma of being a gamer with kids is a difficult one to pin down. It's kind of a nebulous fusion of all the other six. You've shown your kids the games you loved as a child, played games with them, played games for them, watched them playing games on your amazing TV and on your account, and yet, for all that, for all your efforts to try and create another Final Fantasy fan or whatever extension of your own lost childhood you're trying to project onto them, ultimately, they're just going to like what they like. What is the best YouTube channel in the entire world? Hello and Popcorn! And that's okay, even if they are wrong. Maybe my daughter isn't going to grow up loving Final Fantasy. That's okay as well. Her Minecraft stable is genuinely pretty impressive. Look, it's got a room there and a whatever the heck that is. And I, I told her I'd put it in the video anyway. Perhaps the biggest dilemma you'll face as a parent gamer and maybe just as an adult gamer in general, is wrestling with the, I think, incorrect assumption that your tastes, your likes, and in a sense, your childhood are all now somehow irrelevant or invalid, and that the only way to keep these things alive is to entrust them to your children. Because I don't think that's true, you know? Let them be them. But you also need to remember that despite all the heavy layers of adulthood you're probably carrying around, you also need to let you be you. And you know what? Screw it. I do think Paw Patrol on a roll is a pretty good game actually, and I don't care who knows it. Jump Rubble! Jump! Do you want to play? No. So there you have it. Seven dilemmas only gamers with kids will understand. Do any of these ring true for you? Give us a like if so, or let us know in the comments if we've missed any. And don't forget to click that notification bell and turn on notifications so you don't miss any more of these videos every Friday at 4pm UK time. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.